Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we have a fun project. I'm upgrading to a Rick's tank, which is built for a modern SS Camaro fuel pump. So those of you that are interested in upgrading to fuel injection or have a throttle body that requires 58 to 60 PSI, this is right up your alley. The reason is this is so neat. Obviously it's mass produced for Camaros, but it has no return line needed. You don't have to run a return line from your engine compartment. That's pretty slick. The other thing is, we'll talk about this later, corner pickups. Yeah, I'll show you later. Now, those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. There's another reason why I'm upgrading to this pump is because when I did this Phytech playlist of converting my engine to fuel injection, I installed their force fuel unit, which is basically a reservoir that houses the high pressure pump and you can mount it in your engine compartment. It's a very cool product, but the fact that I wanted my engine compartment super clean, I decided to get creative, which bit me in the butt because I put it in my trunk. Here's a picture of it. Now, those of you guys that called me out on it, that it's not safe to put fuel lines in your trunk because you don't have a fire safety plate in between you, the driver, and the trunk, totally agree with you. <laughs> I do listen. So that's one of the major reasons I'm changing. The other reason is that Holly pump. You see that little Holly pump right there? That's the supply for the reservoir. That thing makes a racket. Here, check this out. I'm gonna jump on the car and show you what it sounds like. All right, team. This is what that Holly pump sounds like. Are you serious? That's pretty annoying, isn't it? Man. Isn't that nuts? Like when I'm driving on the freeway, I can't tell if the engine's making a weird noise or if it's the fuel pump. That's how loud it is. It is super annoying. And it's a failure mode, right? So if we change to this pump, I don't have to worry about that Holly pump. Awesome. So today's project is going to be intense and a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about wiring the fuel pump. There is a standalone sending unit for your fuel gauge, which is also unique. We're also going to talk about AN fuel lines. I'm addicted to AN fuel lines. So if you want to learn how to do that, I'll cover that briefly today. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to put in a drain line should you ever want to drain your tank i'll show you how to safely do that so let's get back to the back of the car and figure out how to drain the current tank because i'm going to pull that tank i'm not going to show that process of pulling the tank by the way just go check out my rob mc um, fuel pickup video oh by the way if you want to buy my rob mc fuel pickup let me know because i don't need it anymore <laughs> So I'm gonna pull the tank, we'll do a tank comparison. I'm gonna show you the guts of this thing too because it's totally different than what you're thinking. So let's get back to the back of the car and hopefully I can utilize the Holly pump one more time to get the fuel out of the tank. All right, this worked out good. I have a push to connect AN fitting to put right on my Holly pump back there. And then I'm running hose to a gas tank. All right, there it is. Right to a five gallon jug. I probably have five gallons in there, so we're gonna see. Do a little test fire. Ah, it's coming out. You guys see that? Perfect. Got the tank out. Man, those of you who've ever done it before, it's a pain in the ass because of this, the filler neck. Notice the new tank doesn't have one. It actually comes with a removable one, which makes removal of a tank so much easier. So I already made a reference on and mounted this it comes with hose clamps as well so when we put it in the car i'm good to go all right in case you're wondering i pulled seven gallons out of this tank there's still three or four gallons in here still a little heavy that means my gauge was telling me at a quarter tank i had 10 gallons it doesn't sound right so the beauty of our next sending unit it's much more accurate so we're going to actually test that we're going to put one gallon in at a time see what the gauge does that gives me more confidence to know when I'm actually empty or not. So that'll be fun. I can actually get more range out of a full tank of gas instead of stressing out about it. Besides this major aesthetic difference, obviously we have a difference with the uh, tank, uh, the pump mount, but everything else looks about the same. So it should fit in like a glove and I'm looking forward to that. So let me go ahead and show you what the Rob MC sending unit looks like and I'll show you the details of the pump and we'll 
get it mounted. Those of you curious, this is a Rob MC pickup looks like. Oversized tubes, return line, fuel uh, uh, line, and no sock on the end to get jammed up. So obviously I have another filter after uh, the pickup, but that's pretty awesome. I also have size six AN fittings on the end. If anyone wants one, hit me up. I'll make a good deal. All right, starting to get exciting. Now, just so you guys know, you don't have to get a full new gas tank to fit that new pump. You can actually buy this section and weld it into your current tank. Now, the reason I want a Rick's tank, can you see down in there, guys? That is a baffle. That's right. This is for road racing or autocross. Let me sh take my camera inside the tank and show you what's going on. Do you see that? Isn't that amazing? Can you guys see those little fingers down there? That uh, Those are actually to hold a corner pickup. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But this tank is built for autocross and road racing. I am so excited about it. Let's talk about the pump. So this pump is actually for an LS3 Camaro. You can get, depending on your horsepower rating, so this is up to 600 horsepower. If you need 700 horsepower, you can get the a ZL1 pump. If you need 800 horsepower, you can get the CTSV2 pump, etc., etc. They're all the same form factor, uh, just different guts, different power. So, and if you get really crazy, you can actually get dual pumps. <laughs> Pretty awesome. You have to contact Vaporworks for that though, because you have to get a special modulator. Yada yada yada. Now, this pump I actually got from Rick's Tanks as a set, and they did a conversion for me. Because if you get this on your own, like an AC Delco pump, you have to change out the regulator. Uh, Vaporworks actually sells that regulator. And this just goes, fits right into the pump, right into the tank. But the cool thing is this is also preloaded. And that sits on the bottom of the tank. That saves this from holding any moment loads and having these springs break off. That's a pretty good idea. And this is its own reservoir. So fuel actually comes in here and it overflows constantly, keeping that pump um, fully submerged. And that's why you can actually run down to almost empty and be fine, like one gallon. So this is the intake. And I mentioned the corner pickups. These are also an accessory. You don't have to get them, but this tank is built for them. And these clip right under those clips I just showed you. And underneath here, these are like valves. So if you're turning and fuel's on one side of the tank, it will go in this valve and this valve will close because there's no fuel there. That's pretty slick. So I'm pretty excited to get that mounted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sending unit in now and and let's go let's see how far it goes down i'm curious to see if it touches the bottom or not because that'll help us gauge uh, when we do our test later all right that's what it should look like when you put the corner mounts in they slip under that tab and they're on both sides here so there's the other one and you see how it sticks up through the top so those are nice and secure now we'll go ahead and put the sending unit in let's see how it looks in the bottom Ooh, pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, guys, we're ready to put the pump in. So I got my gasket. Obviously, I have our line already, but you're gonna have to play with it because this tab on the pump fits in one location only, right there. So when this goes in, your inlet valve is basically gonna be almost pushed up against that divider plate back there. So you're gonna have to play with it and orient the, um, the hose inside the tank. And before I forget, I did rinse out the tanks. So when you get a brand new tank, rinse it out with water. Uh, you're gonna need some towels to absorb the pools of water down there because I won't, you can't turn it upside down and get it all out. Let it rest for a couple days, fully dry. So that's what I did. And the other beauty about these GM um, products, brand new GM products, is they just slip together. Just like that. So I'm gonna monkey with this and get that tab lined up in that slot. See where it ends up. There we go. So you wanna make sure you're pushing on those preloaded springs. If you're not pushing down on those springs, you don't have enough space 
or you have too much space in your tank. So you need to make sure it is preloaded or you're gonna have problems down the road. All right now you can get your lock ring. If your lock ring is stubborn at all, you can actually use some grease on all the contact points and get some channel locks. Bam! Like a glove. Man, this is exciting. Okay, now we get to talk about plumbing. All right, so this is a 3 8 inch uh, nipple for a fuel line, but you can convert it to AN. And as you guys know, my whole car is AN fitting. So I have size six AN lines for fuel, and that's what this is adapted for. I think you can get an eight as well, but it's pretty slick. It's gasketed on the inside. So I put some engine oil on this um, journal right here, or that nipple. And then this slips over behind the shoulder. And we're gonna have to probably put some force on this. Oh, slips right on. And we can now tighten it down. So here's where we're gonna have to start talking about planning because depending where your fuel line is coming from, for example, mine is has to come from this direction and we can't get a wrench in here when the tank is mounted because obviously the trunk floor is right here. So one of my hoses I just removed from the trunk I'm testing with because my differential is right here. So I can't have a line coming straight out. I think that'll work just great because I went ahead and got a male hose end and I'm gonna show you guys how to put it on a sta stainless steel braided hose. I got a male version because I already have the female version in the car and you just have to hook them up just like that. All right, now to show you guys how to use AN fittings. This is one of the reasons I love AN fittings so much. You can reuse the hose, you can reuse the endings, or the hose ends, sorry, not the endings. Um, so what I did was I made a rough mark where I wanna cut the opposite end of this hose, or what I'm attaching to is another hose that has freedom of movement. Now, if you need to measure to an exact point, you need to actually look inside the nut. There's a shoulder in there. That's where the hose has to go all the way down to that shoulder. It's typically, say, right there. So what I would typically do is put this on the mating feature, and you measure from where point A to point B, and that's and deduct that length of hose, and that's your exact hose length. So how do we cut this thing? That's a great question. You can actually use a fine-tooth bandsaw or hacksaw, but what I prefer to use our dedicated AN hose shears. So before we cut it though, we have to do some prep. The reason is if you've ever done this before, or maybe you haven't, what's gonna happen to you is when you, when you go to cut this hose, it's gonna fray. And if it frays, it's gonna make a really difficult time to get this nut on. This is especially true for nylon braided hose. You can typically get away with just putting masking tape on here, but what I do every time, so I don't forget, is I get this pre-tape. Those of you guys in athletics, yeah, this is what we use before we put athletic tape on, so it doesn't take your skin off. And this is um, from Aeroflow. I'll leave a part number below, but, but what you do is you mark where you wanna cut, and then you're gonna tape right over that line. This has no sticky on it, so it's not going to pull the braid off, especially on the nylon hose types, to create that fray. And now you take some uh, better tape, you can use duct tape, you can use athletic tape. I just happen to have some painter's tape here. I'm gonna tightly wrap this four or five times right down the middle so I know to cut down the middle of the tape. All right, cutting through the middle. Bam! So after you cut it, it's gonna make this little pie shape or eyeball looking thing. You can press that on, on your bench top, make it round again. After you get it round, you can take the tape off and we're gonna to move to the vise. I'll show you how to use another key tool of the trade. All right, so I took the tape off and see there's little to no fray. Another trick you can do is, especially on bigger hoses, is you can actually take your uh, belt disc grinder and grind the edges, the sharp edges off with the tape still on. And then when you take the tape off, it'll be nice and smooth so you don't prick your finger. So we can get our nut on. This is a little easier on smaller hoses, but the larger 
hoses like five eighths and up or can be a bear at times. So you need to get the hose all the way in there so it's against the shoulder, just like that. And now the fun begins. So now it's time to put this in there, which is typically not easy to do, especially if you don't have something or someone holding one end while you're wrenching on the other. It does take quite a bit of force. So the best thing you can do is get these uh, vice jaws. So these are aluminum. They won't mar the finish of a fitting. You can also get them in nylon, but obviously all the AN hose companies make them. So we're gonna put this in the vise. And actually I'm gonna put the hose in the vise like this, and we're gonna put the fitting on. I'm snug in my vise. And before we go ahead and start screwing this in, I always like to use a little bit of lubrication for those tight fitting nuts. Insert a joke right there, John. I know you got one. So lube that up. And when we start the process, you wanna make sure this is called the cutting end, goes inside the rubber tube portion. And you can tell if it's uh, going in correctly or not. It should be relatively easy for the first threaded length. And then it's gonna start tightening up. So right about there is where uh, it's tight, too tight for me to turn. So you can get an AN wrench, which is also made of aluminum. I won't mar that finish. You can also use a standard wrench, but just be careful. The steel will scratch that surface if you're not careful. So go ahead and tighten it all the way down as much close as you can get, and then uh, flatten out your flats. All right, there we go. Let's mount it on the tank. Oh yeah, check that out. So it's gonna mount like uh, up like that where we can just screw our existing hose right on there. That is perfect. Now we get to talk about the wiring harness. So here's our wire harness, plug for the pump, and you'll probably notice right away, you go, Mike, why are there so many freaking wires? Well, good observation. Four, there are four wires going into the pump. Uh, two of the wires are actually for an optional uh, fuel sending unit for the gas gauge. And it's, it looks like the old school one with the lever. And that's obviously not on this pump because we have a standalone unit. And now that we're talking about this, I need to point this out to you guys. I didn't notice it until just now. This star pattern is not symmetrical. The wires have to go out the side here because this, the gap between these two screws and these two are different. So you're not gonna mount, be able to mount it unless it's pointed that direction. And now that I've said that, I wanted to double check the plumbing of the corner units in there. So I pulled this and I looked down in there and sure enough, the hose was actually bent underneath the pump. So I remounted the pump. So make sure you mount this after you mount the pump because you can use that hole to look in there to make sure nothing's binding. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a point here it really depends on where you want to wire everything. My wiring is gonna come out uh, the front of the tank. Some people have their wiring going out the back of the tank. It's really up to uh, your design and what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go with this routing. So I'm gonna pick this length here. I'm gonna cut these wires um, probably in the middle for both of them. And I'll show you my favorite trick for splicing them together. All right, all right, all right. My favorite splice tool with my favorite saying. So you guys seen this before? This is a solder splice. So that is solder in the middle and you don't have to do much. It comes with shrink wrap tubing, different sizes. Just put your, put your, in a docking position and you just take two pieces of wire and turn them around each other like that. Slip this over so the solder's right in the middle. Then I take a heat gun. You can use a match, but preferably you'd use a heat gun. So you guys notice that solder melted in the middle and it provides a waterproof connection. So we're just gonna to top it off with our shrink wrap tubing and we're good to go. We are basically ready to go. So before we put this in the car, you might wanna consider a couple things. One, I'm going to mark on here like my min and max lengths from the edge of the tank here. 
because when we go to wire it, I don't want to be pulling on it like, you know, too much. I want to give it enough room at the minimum, say right here. So I'm going to take a gray Sharpie and just mark around the harness. Then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to push it all the way in to see where I kind of like it, where that would be okay with me, where you're not pinching it in between, say, the tank and the body, and it's a nice fit. I'm going to do my minimum here. So I'll just mark it here. The other thing to do is while you're here, go ahead and put a terminal on your ground. So there's three ground wires. Remember, we're not using one of the black ones. And frankly, I don't know which black one it is. So I'm going to use all three ground wires and put them on there. So I got it terminated and then I can easily uh, find a mount on the body wherever I run this, we haven't decided yet, and uh, put a screw in and call it good. So you don't have to do that while you're in your trunk. So now we're ready to go. All right, before we put the tank in, you gotta put your straps in. The kit comes with straps and they're a little bit longer than my old straps. So it leads me to believe that maybe the tank is a little thicker. I'll do another measurement and tell you guys at the end, but that's how it should look. That tab should come out that slot. And now we can put our tank in this way. And once it's in place, we can bend these up around the tank. Here we go. Yeah, the tank doesn't fit. Oh my God, unbelievable. It's actually to be expected when you buy a brand new product and try to put it in your 50 year old hot rod. So yeah. We get to do that next episode because we've spent enough time putting everything else together. So next episode, we're going to modify the tank, the brand new tank to fit in the GTO, wire the pump, show you the workaround for how to drain your tank after everything's installed, and most importantly, test drive the thing. So guys, thanks for hanging out. You know, worst case scenario, you can take your stock tank and cut that filler tube off and buy one of these at least make it easier for your stock tank removal. But wow, I'm stunned. <laughs> I cannot believe it doesn't fit. So we'll see what kind of works involved next episode. So subscribe if you haven't, and you guys know the drill, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.